Right. So today's project of many. This guy right here is a connector off of the back of a auto darkening mirror for a Dodge. Now I've been doing a ton of work to my friend's Dodge. And there's scattered bits and pieces and a little bit of video laying around from all that. But what I'm really interested in is setting up an auto darkening mirror because from the junkyard it's like 11 bucks for the mirror which is a good shot plus they'll replace it if I tell them it doesn't work. They're pretty cool that way. But it needs to be wired in. So I think I told it, took this one from early 2000 or late 90s Dodge Avenger. I mean the, the mirrors are the same. They may have slightly different wiring depending on what's in the mirror but for the most part they're just pretty much exactly the same. The first three wires or what matter on the connector these three right here and it'll be power ground and then the reverse trigger so that the mirror will stop darkening when you're trying to go backwards now I have to replace or basically create all the wire I went in and uh, scaled this piece of red wire to find a piece of it that was roughly the right length all this wire is junk leftovers from taking a boat apart I'm losing the wire and I need my wire strippers. Where are my wire strippers? There they are. So I'm going to clean up and neaten and make this a nice wiring package using some of the wiring tricks and goodies I have laying around here. So, first and foremost, without cutting all the wire off. Wow, that's fine. Let's check that. Pull up one grade. Yeah, it's pretty fine wire. And this should be getting good and hot. We'll check that as well. Yeah, it's hot. So what I want to do is tin this guy. Come on, get hot. Uh, the soldering iron is kind of dirty from the last few uses. So I'm going to juice it with some fresh solder. There we go. That's the kind of crap I want to see. I've got to get enough in the wire so that works the way it needs to. Okay, blue and white is actually the hot wire. I went and checked the um, wiring diagrams which I have for the Dodge truck which will give me a good idea. The wiring diagrams may be different from the various setups but it actually is possible to figure out what's what because they do this on a position basis on the mirror in the connector and the wiring diagram will show you and tell you what the three positions are so let me hook them together there we go, nice solid bond Okay, the length of the wire in question, ouch, that's warm, surprise, roughly there has been measured off, it's going to have a little excess on it, that's okay, but now what I need is mini shrink, because I'm going to go ahead and shrink coat all those, I like doing my wiring by welding, or excuse me, soldering, welding, duh, duh, he's an idiot, I like to solder my connections where I can, and then um, heat shrink them, I do the heat shrink this way with a heat gun. Typical shrink on this is four to one. So as long as you're close, it'll work. It doesn't have a lot of strength. Like the wire insulation, it's not quite as strong. It thickens up a little bit as it shrinks. That's normal. But chunk. So that's my red wire. Now, since I'm using old boat wire, colors aren't going to quite match, but, you know, we'll make do. 
So I'm going to use the blue, or excuse me, gray with a blue stripe, which is a heavier gauge wire as my ground. Which again, same deal, I got to sit on the soldering iron here and heat her up and get her soldered. If you tin the wire, which is what this is, what I'm doing here, get it hot, get it coated with solder. Then when it comes time to stick the wires together, you have solder in both of them. Makes it much easier to uh, stick them together with the solder. They'll bond much quicker than trying to heat up two different wires and get all that stuff working. So okay, here's my ground wire. Give it a little twist. And over here into the heat we go. One of these days if I ever keep at this I'm going to build myself a clamp so I don't have to fight this soldering gun so much. There is something to be said as well for having the heavy hand triggered guns rather than the small pencil iron. Come on, lay in there. Hot, hot, hot. Got to get them hot and then pull them apart. Come on. There she goes. So it's a little tricky to get that and make it work nice and friendly. Because friendly it ain't. So I'm going to do the other wire as well and then I'll heat shrink all of them one piece at a time. Let me get this guy. End. Come on, tin up. The rosin and the solder is what's got to get in there along with the heat to get it nice. There we go. That's that guy. And then the purple wire right here would be the reverse trigger. Oops, not quite enough. There we go. Trip, 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 trip. Fart and blossom. Come on. Let's go. Whoops, we don't need anybody sticking out. No wild hairs today. Wow, there's some solder hanging out underneath there. Let's see if I can use any of it. There we go. so much grease on this counter I could set fire to the thing if I ain't careful. Speaking of which I finally broke down and did what I should have done a while ago. I don't have a fire extinguisher in here. So I finally just went ahead and Amazoned one because it's been about time to have one of them for a while. Alright so let's lay the handles on there. Thank you that's better. Let's see if we can get them both hot and bonded. I don't think there's enough. No, there's not enough solder on them. Let's see if we can get this one coated a little bit better. me. That's a bit iffy. Alright, so if you get a bond you don't quite like, it looks like a, kind of a cold joint, you got to take it back apart and get it right. I got to get just hot enough and the solder's got to bond up good. And if you still don't like it, and want a little bit more, you can touch it with the iron and weld it, but this one's good. She's got good bond. 
It might not always coat every bit of the wire, but you've got to have a good section of it well bonded. Okay, so now I need to snort my way down this wire, which is way too long. Because I had to dig it out of the wire pile. I wanted to make sure I had all of it rather than tossing away or ending up a few inches short. The embarrassment potential is high. All right, here we go. Line that up about halfway. And Gazinga. Some heat guns get real warm. And they work real nice, but they do not burn the plastic. That's the beautiful part. So it gives you about the best finish you could want. So, now I've got the three wires nicely done. i got a couple of spares in here that don't need to do anything and I don't really need to worry about them. And I need to cover the wire up. So what I'm going to do, because I don't know how far I'm going to go with the rest of these wires, but I know this guy's going to reach the power. I have a certain length here. I'm going to kind of cheat. Very gently put that in the clamper. That's what? 3 8 braid. That's quarter braid. So I've been getting to be real happy using this expandable braided tubing. It really works nicely for what I'm trying to do here, which is protect the wires, make them look nice. Now, I gotta use a torch. Gently melt the ends of it. It'll unbraid itself if you don't do that. Then I'm going to measure this out the same length as what I'm working with here. Cut it off, allow myself some extra space. Now, you might be tempted to use a soldering iron. I don't like to use it for straightening this up. Now, of course, it'll burn real quick in the, the flame, but I never like to use the soldering iron because you get the plastic on it and then it ain't right and you're fighting with yourself. So now, I'm going to get these three wires. I'm going to get the three ends and I'll straighten it out in a minute. So, what you can't see is here's my wire. These are the three longest pieces. I'm going to go ahead and get them. This stuff stretches and will blow out so when you push on it you get lined up to it. You see how it stretches and gets bigger? So I get started with all three wires. Um, bare wire will not push through it. Don't even try. It will drive you crazy. If I do it one wire at a time it will be easier too.
once I get it started, you get back behind it, push, and it does this thing where you, you push in on it and it expands, then you pinch it and draw, and you draw that expansion down it. This makes a great abrasive shield for the wire. It makes wire looming very much nicer, but breaking in and out of it is a pain by comparison to that plastic flex shield that you find a lot of people using. I don't like that flex shield very much. You just keep feeding it on. And the bubbles get pushed down and it strings its way up the wire. Now this is a Chinese finger puzzle type deal so if you're not careful the stuff will tighten up on the wire and you won't be able to move the wire in it at all. And since I'm going to have to pull through slack wire I don't want to get two nuts with it. Getting close. Right down here towards the end. And I should have three wires in there somewhere. Which I seem to have a yellow wire that went for a red. See two wires but don't see the yellow one. I can see it in the jacketing though. Coming to the light of day here. Come here. You little bugger. There she be. Now the trick is going to be to carefully feed the yellow wire into it, pull it straight. So you've got to have it almost, see how I'm stringing it out? you got to have it almost straight. And then you just pull on it. feeding two pieces of wire through it. Move it over to this other vice you can't see. And I will just sit here slowly with the thing stretched out, pulling. Oh, you bound up, did you? I got past the end of my red wire. Never claimed this was easy. But it does work. Alright. Almost got it. Now, since I'm clamped in the vise, I've got the line straight. I know you can't see it. Almost to where I want to be. Good. Now, when I take the thing out, what you'll see is I'm nearly up here at my joins in the wire. I'm going to go ahead and carefully undo, line up my other two wires that are spare that I do not need but are still in there, and we're going to cover them too. and then we'll take the jacketing on up. Now the tail end of this is going to be exposed right behind the mirror so you want neatness and the PT jacketing has a little problem in that it won't give you a neat end because of the nature of the stuff. So what I need to do is shrink wrap it. So you just use shrink wrap to close it down and the stuff looks good. And I think I see the appropriate piece laying right there. So this little guy will go sliding up on it one wire at a time. We'll take it on up there. Okay. When I get it up here close, I can then feed the yellow wire through. All I gotta remember is yellow's my trigger, red's hot. 
and the gray is ground. And I'll ground it underneath the dashboard of the truck when I get there. Okay, so when you go to put this on, one of the things I found, this is frayed out. It's usually a fight to get it on there, but what I've found is if you take it, keep crunching it down, keep rotating the shrink wrap, it will eventually ride up over it, unless you've got it ridiculously undersized, and then it goes. And then it just slides like Mary Ned up through there. And then I get up to that part, which is going to fight a little bit. Hang on a minute. I got to get over all the joints. So I got to be just as tight on that wrap as I can get. Because the wrap will bunch up on you. Now here I'm going to have to rotate because it is just snug going over where I put those solder joints together. There it slid past. And now I can roll all the way up in here. I'm going to pull the jacketing back about half an inch, like so. You can see it's back. And I'll slide the shrink wrap past the end of the PET. I may go more than that. I'm going to go about three quarters of an inch. Get the PET back a little, the shrink wrap on up tight, and then you just gun it. Shrink it down. Got to be careful, the heat gun can actually melt the PET as well. So you don't want to get too ridiculous. So what you end up with is that nice, neat looking joint on the wires that's going to be exposed right behind the mirror when people look through the windshield. Now I turn around and I take the jacketing and I stretch it down tight all the way down the wires and it pushes me down to where I am just past the end of my little red wire. So I'm going to have to take some of this off. Not a lot. That's kind of normal. So I have two choices. I can either pick it where I'm at right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out a piece of this wire because I'm going to need a small chunk of the wire stuck to where I can get to the fuse block. So the quickest way to fix that is to Blush, blush this out and get a pick, open it up and pull the wire through. Which I'll show you in just a sec. So I've got my three little picks here start with a straight one. Now my wire ends right there. I'm going to come back about six inches and I'm going to blush it out. So the PET is open. If I work the pick in there, work it around that wire. Eek, come on. The weave will come apart. I'm not trying to break the weave, I'm just trying to open it up. Get a nice spot in there between the threads of the weave. Kind of doing what sail makers used to do with the ropes and the weave, the awls reaching in and pulling a piece out. So that's coming slowly. What I'm trying to do is get pretty much under it, clear the PET with the straight pick. Because I have the best chance of getting in there. Now, you can see it's wrapped around the pick. And I'll get the hooked pick and make sure I'm absolutely clear of all strands as I go in, like so. Now I can pull the straight pick out and I begin pulling the wire back. Now when I pull down on this, neck down on it tight, wire just comes out to braid, like that. Nice and simple. 
Now I could tape that and whatnot, but you really don't need to. These two are going to go, one's going to go down and make ground and I'm going to whack that guy off. Uh, considering this is the fuse block, I'll find ground within a couple of feet of it. The other wire is a different story. It has to go through the dashboard, the firewall, sorry, of the truck to get out to where my reverse light trigger is. So I'll take it up to that. Go ahead and wind this wire up. Hate throwing it away because you never know when you're going to need it. And this is all good quality wire that come out of a boat where it hadn't rotted. The wire hadn't gotten all corroded and gone bad. The boat itself had corroded and gone bad, but the wire hadn't. So now what I've got, if you look at this, I'll just I'll curl it up. Make a nice coil out of it. It's coiled up, covered with the PET, nice and tight, clean. Power wires broke out of it, and we go on to the rest of them. Now I can go through the firewall unwrapped, but I'm probably going to want to wrap it when I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a lock on the tail end of this PT braid, lock it in place. You don't need it real long. It's, I mean, you can literally lock this stuff down with about an inch worth of this stuff. So, I'll go through here, go down this guy, and slide on up here. Now I've got to be careful because the braid's going to try and push and bunch, so I've got to get a real good pinch behind it and start, like I said, rotating the shrink wrap while trying to shove the strands in there. And after a little bit, you always go back just a hair and keep rotating. Back a hair and keep rotating and then it'll pop out. And that gives you a nice tight. So I, I go ahead and I make sure I'm good and tight here. Because I'm going to gently slide over the end. And shrink it. Now, for pretty work, to make it really nice, what I want to do is shift from the... Uh, look that I have there and go out through the firewall with another piece of it. I really don't like how that came. Best cut them with the scissors. They need to be really, really sharp. So let me get this again. I'm going to come back about an inch, cut it right off. You get a nice sharp cut. It, it shrinks better. Real quick hit with the torch, get a nice solid end, and then I figure I'm going to go through the firewall. I'm going to want I'm down there. That ought to be more than enough. So now I'll quickly melt this end down. That one's ready for that, and then just for the sake of not having it debrade itself while it's sitting and I'm not using it, I'll melt this end as well. That's it. All nice. Give it a quick cross up. And I'll put it back in this plastic jacket because I don't want it all covered with crud. No need for that. And there we go. Comes in lots of neat colors too. So I got one with the blue and black. I got green and black crossed axes. You can get it in reds. Neat stuff. It's cheap too. It really isn't that expensive. Heck, I never melted that one. works really really good ouch also really hot when you melt it okay now I needed that short piece I made I want to go down this wire Oop. 
chunka, 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 chunka. Once you get in there a little ways, you have to start bunching and walking it. Because it'll just, like I said, Chinese finger puzzle it to the point where it doesn't want to move at all. This is kind of ridiculous, but I did promise my friend I'd do something nice to his truck because I did it to mine and I really like it. The, those active mirrors are so much nicer than having to reach up and flip the buttons and all that other nonsense. And they're never in the right position all the time. So like a little snake, she goes on up there. And we'll get it up close to where I had the other one. Now I could have broke the wires out on the other side, but I didn't know what my measurements were or anything else. So what I'm going to do is I now have two of them stuck together there, kind of an ugly looking joint. A quarter inch jacket. I'm going to bring the shrink wrap back down and I'm going to quietly walk it and work it over. Now centered on the two and I'll shrink her down. And that leaves me with a nice, neat wiring harness that I can use to put in for the mirror. It's just a very slick little idea. It works good. And you'll see the finished effect in a little while. Okay, so here we go. Nice, clean. It is an automated mirror. It's wired in. It goes behind the fascia up here it's always going to wander around because there's no good clamp for it up there but it's hidden behind the fascia all the way across down past the gauges it breaks out under here we have the ground wire because there's no good grounds behind this dashboard that I can get to easily so I put set a ground here I did that on my truck I've tapped into a switch source right there this is a little carrier that goes behind the fuse. You just pull a fuse out and put a new fuse in if it ever goes. This thing will not bother a 10 amp fuse in the slightest. The wiring is up under the dash, headed up through there. Probably can't see it, but the teensy bit of wire is right there, off my finger. And pull the hood here. We have to get one other piece, which is the reverse trigger. And we did that up here in the front. Up hood. Now I did wire something up in the back of the truck. So I'm tapped on to the reverse trigger over here. Reverse wire from the reverse switch because I'm feeding power to this relay. That relay through this wire right here is feeding back to a 55 watt flood that is mounted under the rear bumper. So I tapped in the reverse trigger here for the mirror because there's no real good place to do it inside. So where does this guy go? Well, if you watch these wires, they disappear all the way down underneath. And there's a ground wire that comes off of it related to it. And if I go around the back of the truck and look under her butt end, you see that light. And that throws a lot more light than the reverse lights do, which is very handy. So that's all wired in, and it was all done with the jacketing. This PET jacketing I keep talking about here. So all the headlights are done that way. And these two relays, low and high, for the headlight system. So all done. All in good shape. And it works. Tested.